The Muslims are here to stay. And Pat Buchanan said in a very profound essay, if this government thinks they can wage war on Islam like we waged war on fascism or communism or any other ideology, they have another thing coming because Islam has been here for 1400 years and proved itself indestructible. Islam is indestructible. Islam is indestructible. And that is what Pat Buchanan had to say. A respected Republican. Islam is indestructible. So I want all of you to recognize that this country has great ideals. These ideals are rooted in Islamic ideals. And toleration is an Islamic gift to the West. And this can be historically proven because the first edict of toleration was the edict of Buddha. And it was done under the suzerainty of the Ottoman Empire by a Unitarian Transylvanian prince. We also have evidence, clear evidence, that John Locke, one of the greatest political theorists in Western history, was influenced by Edward Pocock who just happened to be the professor of Islamic and Arabic studies at Cambridge University. He convinced John Locke to abandon his Trinitarianism and embrace Unitarianism, to embrace the unity of God. And so we must see that Islam has given too much, and tonight is about giving. The Muslims have given too much to civilization for them to be accused or abused by those people that wish nothing but harm for this country. That is what they want. And I will end on this note that I sincerely believe until the Palestinian issue is recognized as the festering sore on the body of this planet, until the United States of America rises up to her responsibility in addressing a grave crime against a people for over 50 years who have been suffering in humiliation, in abject poverty, and have suffered at the hands of the current government that could be called nothing less but a fascist government. Nothing less but a fascist government that Palestine is the issue. And while I hold no enmity in my heart for Jewish people, I hold no enmity in my heart for the children of prophets, for the children of Jacob, because I know that their father would only wish them well. And I wish what their father wishes for them. But I call on the Jewish people of this country to rise up and condemn the oppression that they see with their own eyes. We as Muslims must abandon tribalism. We must abandon tribalism. We must reject the concept of collective guilt. We must reject the concept of Bani Islam. I did not join a tribe. I joined what I believe is the religion of truth. And wherever that religion tells me to stand, I will stand with it, whether it's with the Muslims or against them. We cannot fall victim to tribal mentalities. We have to reject in our hearts vengeance, revenge for the sake of pride. We have to re reject this in our hearts and begin to read the Quran as it was clearly intended by the author who we believe is the Lord of the worlds when he said in the Quran again and again, وَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ that yes, you can indeed redress wrongs as you choose. But if you show patience, if you're forbearing, that is better to you. If you forgive, that is better to you. And I was with the parents of Rachel Corey, who lost their beautiful daughter in Palestine, run over and crushed by a caterpillar a caterpillar tractor built in the United States of America and given as aid to Israel and used as a weapon 
of destruction against a Palestinian pharmacist who had nothing to do with any violence against the state of Israel, but was being punished for collective guilt, which is a crime against every legal system on this planet. The idea that one holds the sins of another is alien to the Abrahamic tradition. The Quran says, and it's reiterated in the Bible in its Old and New Testament forms, La taziru waziratun wizra ukhra. No soul bears the burden of another soul. The sins of those Palestinians who are having their trees uprooted, who are having their houses destroyed, has nothing to do with anything other than gross injustice, and we reject it. Just as we reject innocent Jews that are killed in the name of Islam. I reject it. I want to stand by the truth. That's where I want to be. I want to stand by the truth. And I want all of you to stand by the truth. And look into your hearts. Astafti qalbik wa of token nas. Take a fatwa from your own heart, even if people give you fatwa. You ask your own heart what our Prophet ﷺ would do. Would he kill children? We only have 500 hadith that are absolutely of the status of the Qur'an. And one of them says, نَهَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم عَنْ قَتْرِ النِّسَاءِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ The Prophet of God forbade the killing of women and children. The Prophet of God forbade the killing of women and children. The Prophet of God forbade the killing of women and children. We cannot see his name vilified. We will not allow his religion to be vilified for crimes that have nothing to do with his religion. And we should say, like he said, when Khadi ibn Walid killed those prisoners unjustly, Allahumma inni bari'un mimma fa'ala Khalid, I am innocent of what Khalid did. I am innocent of what Khalid did. This is what he cried, and this is what we must cry. Islam is innocent of what's being done in its name. We reject it in the same way that the Christians now reject the gross intolerance, the crusades, the children's crusades, and every other pre-modern crime that was done in the name of Christianity, the modern Christians reject it. And we too must reject what is being done in the name of our religion. Really, with one voice. And our ulama have immense burden. And I believe that our ulama have failed to address this critical issue. And I want them to address it because it must be seen for the crime that it is. It has to be seen for the crime that it is. And I want to say, Daniel Pipes put a test out on the internet how to determine whether somebody is a good Muslim or a bad Muslim. And I took that test and I failed. And I want to say to all of you, I hope you fail that test too. And I hope that you don't want to be a good Muslim in the eyes of Daniel Pipes. And for anybody here who's representing him, I, have, I wish all the best for that man. I hope he's guided. I hope he looks into his heart and really reassesses what he's been doing. But I really want to say that I want to be a good Muslim in the eyes of God. And being a good Muslim in the eyes of God often means being condemned in the eyes of people. And so don't be ashamed. Jesus Christ told his followers, you will be persecuted in my name. Jesus Christ told his followers, the people of the world will hate you and they will persecute you because people of truth are often hated and despised by people of falsehood. So do not be afraid of being hated and despised. May God strengthen this organization. May he strengthen all our organizations. May you go back to your communities with a renewed spirit to strive even harder. And I would say, Tariq Ramadan, when he is refused, or not refused, when his visa is revoked, it's time to change administrations. And I want to say, I am, if the Republicans are closer to the truth, I'm with them. If the Democrats are closer to the truth, I'm with them. But in this case, anything but Bush.
Because this country has to send a message. This country has to send a message to the rest of the world that the last four years were a mistake. Abu Ghuraib was a mistake. Abu Ghuraib does not represent the good people of the United States. And Abu Ghuraib goes right to the top. And just like Truman said, the box stops here. Assalamu alaikum.